Can you see me? Uh, I can't see you yet. There you are. There I am. Right on. We am Hello. walking. Thank you for taking some time to join us here in Vancouver, Canada. Happy, happy, happy to. How's Canada? No, where it, I was just going to say where it, it is full on snowmageddon. Oh my God. Like we never get snow, but we have so much snow right now. It is deadly and it's packing snow. Oh my gosh. We're like well, snowmen be... and like we're dialed. Like oh. I teach at, a, at BCIT, I'm one of the radio instructors. Uh -huh. We have a snow day. It snowed so much. It's a snow day. Oh my God. And like, like I said, Vancouver never gets this, right? Like we get some here and there and but not but it's like gone like two days later kind of thing. Wow. No chance this is gone in two days. Oh, I'm so jealous. We've got like yeah. 68 and sunny. It, where are you? Texas. Oh, so Dallas, you're hot yeah. as hell right now then. No, we're, yeah, we are like 68. I'm like, I've got yeah. a sweater on trying to look like it's winter. <laughs> nice well thank you again for uh for taking some time and joining us Happy um i want to i want to tackle a lot of stuff with you uh today and I, of course everybody's going to know you first and foremost from being on the real housewives of dallas so it seems like a, a pretty good place to start great now you left the show right before covid talking right about, talking about good timing i mean yeah no, you know what, when I left, COVID had just hit. And I thought, oh, I can't, I just can't imagine filming a season like, how are you supposed to be funny and have yeah. reactions with a mask on your face? It's just, you know, not not me at all. No, not at all. And so pre-COVID, that's your time. Do you, do you ever get used to the cameras being around 24-7? Yeah. You know, I kind of grew up in show business. So for me, doing plays and, you know, honestly, growing up on the carnival really kind of desensitized me to people's opinions. So I was, I mean, you think about it, I started in pageants, and then I went from pageants to modeling, and then from modeling to acting, and then, you know, so yeah, cam cameras never, cameras, people never really bothered me. Just but it also wasn't right and it wasn't my first reality show so i had sort of been really put through it with tv lands uh she's got the look oh, so right. i kind of was ready for it and and did you ever feel i guess with both shows did you ever feel like the producers you know kind of took things and and that you said and, and aired them out of context a hundred percent like they do that all the time to fuck all with the people, time right? Yeah. All the time. I, I know of a show, I won't say which one, where a, a woman literally told me that she was having one-on-one -on -one conversation while she was mic'd with the producer, and the executive producer went ahead and cut that audio and ran it over a moving vehicle and made it look like she was having that conversation with another person in a car. Oh. Yeah interesting Which but they do that because happened. they want people to listen right it's trying to get that like a little bit of drama. drama maybe it's not necessarily exact but it's like yeah they, here's the thing when you won't put your when you don't put your opinion on camera uh producers then have to go around you know try to find a way to get your opinion on camera whether it's with or without your permission for sure right. Right. And what's sure. the best, what's the best thing about, you know, reality TV and starring in a show like that? And what's the worst thing? Uh, the best thing is the messages that I get from the people who really kind of the ones that relate to you, you know, it's the woman who says, who sends me a message and says, I never understood why my husband was so quick to anger. I never understood it. It upset me. I thought it was me. She's, and then I watched you on the show and I saw how you reacted and you explained about your amygdala. And she goes, not only do I understand my husband better, but we're closer because I know what to do and what not to do to, that would set him off, his triggers. Right. You know, so there's that, there's the people who, you know, grew up with nothing that believed that they can do anything. There's the people who were, you know, physically, mentally, sexually abused that, um, you know, if I can do it, if I can survive it, so can you. And it's just, it's being that, that human for so many, that is the biggest blessing. You couldn't, 
pay me the amount of money that the joy that it gives me when I get those emails. So, oh yeah. And, and yeah. What, the, so what are the, what's the bad side? So the worst is not having the truth out there, um, mm. being victim to whatever the you whatever the producers need you to be, whether it's the villain, the victim, the agitator, the liar. You don't get a choice. <laughs> right. You know, you don't get a choice. You watch the episode, like really, oh, okay. No, yeah, no, not only that, but sometimes, like even at reunions, you know, I've had vice presidents walk in and tell me if you mention this on camera we will not air it wow yeah uh-huh because in thailand when i was really triggered by going down to the sex industry um that bothered me big time because you know i work very closely with unlikely heroes and i've seen videos of raids that we've done in that very area where we've rescued girls and um to be in that area and have you know, some of those women treat it like it was no big deal, really was a trigger for me. And I got purposely told that if I brought up sex trafficking at all as an excuse for my behavior, it would not be aired. Wow. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I mean, when you say the way they twist the truth, I don't think people understand the impact that has on a human to some of the things that they twist, you know? Hmm. interesting that they would say you can't say that as opposed to you just say it they don't air it well they knew that it was a big part of my reaction why I went home and said the things I said which ended up of course being the reason why I chose to leave hmm. but you know for me it just that was the epitome of a bad situation you oh, know yeah. Dude, you I should have I should have gone back to the hotel and let them do their thing and you know I just I didn't never need to be in there that not 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 with my background and not with my uh nonprofit work I didn't need to be there no oh, yeah fair fair uh and you have a, a stepdaughter yes I do Elise, Elise? How, how old is she yeah she, oh my god 23 now oh so she's she knows that you're like Oh, reality yeah. tv oh yeah. And, yeah 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 oh yeah oh yeah no no she knows she's used to it i mean it's season one she was on a couple of times and you know and then we got um we got some haters that said some not nice things and i was like you know okay yeah uh, you know my husband chose not to have her on anymore just because it wasn't you know it's not it's not worth uh you know her teeth need to be whiter i'm like oh my god she's a child leave her alone you know the, the craziest thing like some people like they're just trolls right like some I people mean, just love pushing those buttons i think people that have an automatic income from the government have nothing better to do than sit around and watch reality tv and give you their opinion <laughs> and you know opinions are like it you know <laughs> yes. everybody's got one <laughs> everybody has one exactly <laughs> Um, of course, uh, Leanne, uh, uh, like a ton of people binge Real Housewives. Yeah. What are you binging right now? What have you been watching lately? God, you know what? Since, honestly, since the day I quit, the day I quit, um, well, the day I knew I was going to quit, and then about three months later when I actually publicly quit, I got a Netflix subscription. <laughs> and that has been a downfall for me i have binged everything yeah. almost on netflix you know if it's a thriller movie or an action movie or a, a futuristic movie i i love all of that fantasy movies you know all the sci-fi stuff i'm into all that so yeah what did yeah. i binge last night i watched a movie last night um God, it was great. See, that's my problem. I watch so many movies that my friends are like, so what have you watched? And I'm like, well, there was that thing where the guy thought his wife was alive, but it was all in his <laughs> imagination. And that was a great movie. And they're like, what's the name of it? I was like, I don't know. What the hell is it called? Yeah, uh, honest. It's so crazy. Yeah, and you but, fell you right know, into like, it. such a good time too to like leave that show and, you know, I mean, I guess if there's a good thing in, in the COVID is you're able to be home, you know, kind of chill out and maybe change your life a little bit and be with family I, and stuff. And 
we changed our lives a lot, to be honest with you. It For the first year, we did nothing but like renovate the backyard. We have two different backyards. We renovated backyards. I completely redid the dining room. I completely <laughs> redid the back living room. You know, I think when I started, my goal was, I don't want this house to look anything like what it looked like when we were filming. I just don't want anything to remind me of that, you know? So I like, yeah. I took a sponge and I faux painted the back of the house completely myself. I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna do it. And I just did it. And it looks nice. great. Like people are like, you did that? And I'm like, I know. You know, all this so time yeah. in my hands. Like, yeah, I'm gonna try I shit. Did. NCIS on TV nonstop and sponging away, you know? Yeah. So it was yeah. great. And I I honestly I thought, you know, all that time that you never have time to really look at where you are you're so busy looking at where you want to be so I started looking at where I was and I was like you know what now I'm going to take the money that I've earned and I'm gonna put it where I, I want it and that's what I've done and it has been a godsend I mean we've loved everything we've done my poor husband I will say though there's this new thing at my house I'm not allowed to say you know what I was thinking anymore because my <laughs> husband realizes that that means he's gonna have to um right and I'm like, you know what I was thinking? <laughs> oh, I've already told him I want to paint the house. So he's like, oh, my God. <laughs> Bracing for all your shit, yeah. Uh, Leanne, you, you have almost a million. I was checking, you know, your socials and stuff this morning, getting ready and everything. You have almost a million people following you on yeah. Instagram. It is, insane. And they're, hi they're highly engaged, it, too. I love it. Well, they're engaged because you are as well. Do you, do you feel yeah. the need, like, to kind of curb what you're saying or are you just unapologetically yourself well i mean i don't have the pressure that i did to get drunk and talk crazy like i did on the shows talk smack <laughs> right. but um i do feel i've always felt a certain amount of pressure to be responsible uh for what i produce what i put in the world and so i've really kind of pushed that uh on instagram i've had these you know i've had great ideas that I've yet to put forward into implementation. And I think you're going to see me doing a lot of that this year. I still want to do a wellness Wednesday where I do an Instagram live. You can come on and ask me questions, you know, oh, that's cool. mental health questions, uh, how to handle situations, um, you know, that kind of a thing. So I, I still want to be a part of everyone's life. And I think that's what I love the most when people say I'm, you know, combined say, I miss you on TV. And I'm like, well, I'm here. I, you know, just come talk to me here. I try to answer everybody. Yeah. Well, that's great. Uh, Leanne, I want to respect your time. I told you it'd be maybe 15, 20. We're about halfway through. So I do want to plow through a, a couple of things, it. just kind of outside of, you know, reality TV and what you're known for. Okay. Uh, and I love finding out about this kind of stuff just because I'm a music nerd. What was the music like in your house as a kid growing up? What are your parents doing? Um, well, so my biological father played in a band with Waylon Jennings in the garage. No, really? So, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. So I have a huge love for music. I've always said music soothes the beast. Music can bring emotions out in you that you weren't sure you had. I mean, music has always been my go-to for energy, for enlightenment, for joy, for solace. Uh, for motivation, you know, and anger. I mean, let's get it. I, there's a lot of anger songs in there too. So um, sure. I just, I love music. And so, yeah, I kind of grew up with, uh, you know, I forget what you call, who made them, uh, you know, like the songbirds and the, the all, they were like mixed tapes, but they were mixed LPs. You yeah. Know? Like songbird is Anne Murray. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yeah. So, so like different, um, all different because you know I'm huge. Elton John, Billy Joel, um, uh, I mean Tom Petty. Yeah, shoot, there's a lot of it. I yeah. mean, and then again, I, you know, I kind of make stream because I am a Gemini, so I also love live and um, Eminem and and Cardi B and. It's you just never know. It really my music sets my mood for me. 
So. Yeah, that's super cool. And having a musical dad like that, oh my oh, god! Yeah. Did you were you did you ever go on the road with him? Did you see any shows? Was there any like backstage stuff? You were privy to any of that shit? Or? No, just uh, I was I was so little that it was just you know in the garage rehearse band rehearsals awesome. um, that I didn't go. Yeah, I didn't go to any of that. So I yeah. kind of I mean, you know, I lucked out, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. I don't know. My mom, my mom and uh, my biological dad divorced when I was about three and a half, four. So, oh, you know, okay. I did, didn't, it didn't stay through my life. I went and lived with my grandparents. So. Okay. And what was your first concert that you went to? Oh God, don't hate me. I think it was Kenny Rogers. <laughs> <laughs> it was either Kenny Rogers. Um, oh my God. My mom played uh, uh, Kenny Rogers so much as a kid. Like, oh my gosh. It could have been Kenny Rogers. It could have been uh, Donnie and Marie. And wow. it could have been, um, what was it? Was it the Osmond 8? No. Uh, Jackson. Oh, Jackson. Yeah, the Jackson. Jackson 5? Jackson, Jackson 5. So that yeah. was probably early on. I know I saw Michael. I saw Donnie and Marie. Because, you know, Donnie, was, I had a huge crush on Donnie. I had to have I every mean, didn't every. Didn't every girl have a, a poster of Donnie on the every girl? The wall? Donnie, it was it was a it was a fight between Donnie and Scott Bayo for me. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, by the way, I love one of your um, one of your current tweets. It's something like you know to the effect of like 2022 is a is a blank canvas. You know what do you want to do with your life, kind of thing. So yeah. what do you want in 2022? Oh my gosh. So I have so many, I like, I literally have notebooks that I write stuff down on. So I have like film festival goals. I have, um, uh, magazine goals. I have you know, all kinds of stuff, you know, so travel goals. I just, I try to, um, I try to really stretch myself. I really want to spread my wings. I want to continue my, I had such great travels last year. I want to continue my travel. I want to um, continue my collaborations with some amazing uh, vendors that I'm working with. And I want to, you know, keep pushing the envelope of um, doing more work in the mental health world, um, more work in the LGBTQ world, uh, that kind of a thing. Yeah. So. That's great. And, 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 you know, a lot, no, not a lot of people um, do that for themselves. They don't set goals. Oh, I'm, I'm literally like these notepads have page after page after, like when I, I have a big dry erase board in front of me, I need to like clean it off and start, you know, <laughs> start fresh with like, cause I did that one year, you know, I'd be like, okay, January, these are two things that I want to do these, that I want to attend or that I want to be a part of. So I, I slowly research and, and get stuff out like, out like that. Yeah, I do the same thing. You know, you need to, how you can hit goals if you don't have any to hit. Exactly. Well, how can you grow if you don't stumble? And how can you fly if you don't try, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah, well said. Hey, which celebrity, um, if any, do you get sometimes mistaken for? None. I mean, mm. Vanessa Williams, really. I know that seems it, crazy, but I've gotten it my whole life. Like, everybody's like, oh, my God, you look so much like Vanessa Williams. And I'm like, true. well, thank you. You She's, totally do. She is gorgeous. I'll take it. <laughs> um, we, we talked about movies and stuff and kind of binging through series and movies and all that. Do you get into the, the superhero stuff? Do you like the Thor and the Batman and Superman? Yes. And all that? legends like i've how, finished all of legends what is it right like legends oh is God. great all of legends and then um I, I got into um oh what was the one where the he he and he got lost on a ship and his dad killed himself and uh i can't remember it's part of the whole series the dc series and then from that came iron fist and um Power you know Man. Yes, yes, yes. Oh my God, Power Man is so good. That's such a great oh, movie. Yeah. Oh my God, Dead. His daughter was the one. You know. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, I I genuinely love all that kind of stuff. Yeah, same. Me, it's such. You know what? For me, life doesn't really. Movies about life don't do it for me because I have life. I want movies that are my escape. You know. Yeah, take you away from shit. 
yeah exactly. i feel the exact same way like and, and for me those those kind of movies the superhero movies you know i read so many comic books as a kid i still kind of do not really i've got two kids and a wife and two jobs and you know i kind of don't really have the time for it but yeah. i still do time to time but it blows my mind the amount of stuff that's being created just because i'm such a comic book nerd right exactly you know and have you seen like i, I gotta tell you i watch adult swim every night before I go to bed. That is how I go to bed. I make my little Theraflu and I sit, lay in bed and I watch my adult swim. And you know, what's so funny is my husband hates cartoons. He hates me watching it. But every now and then you'll hear him cackle his ass off over something somebody said on my cartoons, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, see, that's why they call it adult swim you know it's, it's so good funny. i mean there's so many funny funny adult animated shows like oh my uh, god rick and morty i swear rick to and god Morty's if, I, awesome. if i could just be on rick and morty's like in one episode that would be like my dream you know yeah rick and morty's funny uh you ever get into big mouth I haven't gotten into Big Mouth yet, but I know it. God. I've watched it a few times. Like, I'm more of a um, guy laughing. Bob's Burgers. Have you ever yeah, watched the beginning Bob's. of Bob's Burgers? I always pause it because the store next to them on the right always changes. Always, always has a different name, and it's always freaking hilarious. Yeah. And the uh, mouse killer people, the van always has a different name and it's always hilarious and yeah. if you pause it I, I wish someone would just do like a series of like what they've named the stores oh you they know? probably yeah you could probably google oh, that for sure it is, yeah. my husband and i are like i'm like okay you do the truck i'll do the store because it goes so quick you know you're like you're old and in bed and you're like what did it say <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome uh and the guy that does bob's burgers voice i can't remember his name he's, he does arby's he does art oh does he do Ar Arby. arby's i didn't know that he's also the voice of archer <gasps> really oh i haven't i haven't watched archer yet oh my god okay yeah Good. next archer you're gonna be like oh my this is like one of the best shows ever it's so witty and funny and like it's just so good so i love that to me i love something that is um that pushes my knowledge my brain you know so often what i do basically on a daily basis is really not creative it's business or it's it's going out with friends which is fun but what i love is that i miss creativity that's the one thing i do miss about not being on the show is creating those over the top parties and things like that like i miss that that was to me that was that was sheer joy yeah and of course the last couple of years we haven't been able to even do that with our friends just inviting no. people over and shit right like and not and barely that well, nobody even when you know they're like hey you had covid like three weeks ago i'm not coming i'm over. not coming over your no. house still has the stench you know and I'm like, <laughs> the right. lingering of covid what, whatever uh, are you a good cook if the if people are coming over like if, oh, if, if friends no, are coming no, no, over no, no, no. My my idea of cooking is calling it in, and I I'm what we call an excellent plater. Right. I plate things very well. I do not. I was going to say, what, what are you looking to impress if you're having friends no. over? But yeah, no. no. My friends appreciate that I don't cook. <laughs> uh, let me let me circle back to the music one more time because I, I like to find this about uh, about people as well. So you're stuck on a deserted island. Uh huh. You need three albums. Ooh, okay. What, what albums are you picking? Um, something from Sting. Yeah. Probably Golden Fields. Um, something from Prince. And like the genius. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You know he, he still played? has un unpublished music. It, and he's yeah, he's a ton of stuff in his vaults. Yeah. And that we're oh. eventually going to hear for sure. Yeah. That's... And the, he used to, I don't know if he did it through his entire career, but he used to play like everything, the drums, yeah. bass, yeah. keyboards, guitar, obviously yeah. sing, right? Like the dude he, is super talented. He and I were born on the same day. Oh, no yeah. way. Yeah. Gemini's we're crazy. Oh, that's cool. Um, let's see in the third one God, that'd be tough it pro i'd probably choose a mixed album you know something probably early from my childhood like one of those uh, lindell lps with like you know various artists <laughs> yeah 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 k presents k that was it that was it 
it. Yeah, yeah. I've got them. I've got the LPs in there. <laughs> I love it. All right, I'm gonna wrap it up with uh, with a with a you know maybe you don't have a story, and if you do, that's great. If you don't, that's for, that's fine. Um, have you ever had a near death experience? Like not necessarily where you're like floating over your body or whatever, but holy crap, I could have died there. Several times. Several times. Yeah. I would say most the, most people have. Yeah, I would say the one that sticks out in my mind the most is um, me, my stepbrother and I were uh, in um, Colorado. And um, I remember that it was like one of those days we didn't have ski school or anything. So we went exploring and we found this river that ran around the mountain where we were staying and my brother wanted to go ice skating on it and I was like let me be a good big sister and I grabbed a branch and I said let me test it first and as I jumped the branch broke and the ice broke and I went under the river oh my um it got deep and then I couldn't get out and then I waited for the river to get shallow and I broke the ice with my back and my brother put a stick in and sort of just pulled me out because I was frozen. And then we had to walk like, I don't know, a quarter mile home in the snow, soaking wet. I mean, I remember being in such shock. I was like, David, and I lifted my leg and water came rushing out of my boot. And then my uh, grandmother didn't know. So my grandmother was putting together a nice hot bath for me to get in. And my aunt came bursting in and was like, don't put her in hot water and they filled the bathtub up with freezing cold water through all the ice cubes we had and i could not get in it it looked like it was boil it it felt like it was boiling hot on my skin wow. it and i lost a lot of the um blood flow at my extremities my toes and my hands always stay cold now because it just you know that was how you get in the bathtub so it took probably all day for me to warm up that's crazy yeah i would definitely say that was almost dead <laughs> <laughs> yeah there was another time where i had walking pneumonia here in dallas when i first moved to dallas and i couldn't stay awake and i couldn't stay awake and i remember my roommate tiffany uh her boyfriend had called looking for her and he was like why don't you just go to the clinic that's across the street from your apartment and i didn't know there was one there so I don't remember driving over there. Um, I passed out on the sofa after I checked in. They called my name. I got up. I left my purse. They were like, get your purse. And I went in the back and I was sitting on the table and they were trying to take my blood pressure. And I was so lightheaded. I was like, I'm going to pass out. You got to let me lay down. They're like, you got to sit up for us to take your blood pressure. And I was like, I'm going to pass out. And I just remember passing out coming to and the doctor they called the doctor and she, everybody was freaking out and they were trying to get an IV in me to hydrate me and she let go of the tube attached to the needle and blood sort of squirted a little bit and I just I just rolled my head to the side and all I could get out was like one tear and I thought I'm gonna die here and no one knows where I am I mean my blood pressure was like moments from comatose wow. so yeah but they saved me, made it through. God, <laughs> God saw a reason to pull me through again. He and I are going to discuss that a lot when I get up there. <laughs> oh, amazing. Amazing. I love it. Leanne, thank you again for taking some time to jump on the, the podcast here in Vancouver, Canada. Uh, you're easy to find online. It's just simply your name. Leanne, Leanne Lockett. Lockett. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. That's it. Well, cool. I'll uh, tag you when we're chucking this stuff around and I guess we'll see you online. I would love that. Thank you so much, Todd. Okay. Take care. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Have a great day. Okay. See you. Bye.